Here's an interesting question you frequently see on the test. Manager called you into her office and shared with you the complaint she received about you browsing non-business related sites in the workplace. You did use company's equipment to download some materials from the internet recently. What will you do next? And you need to select all that apply in order. Choice A. I would ask manager to provide evidence and learn more about who filed the complaint. Choice B. I will explain what I did and what I was looking for. Choice C. I would apologize. Choice D. I would take responsibility for my actions. Take a close look, maybe pause this video for 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. If ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you my version. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. What's interesting about this question is that this particular one doesn't have a single obvious answer. There are multiple complex aspects that are tested in this question. And even though there is no obvious answer to this challenge, the solution might be guided based on the listed considerations. Let's look at each one of them. The first one is that organizations monitor computer use and corporate network activities. Companies have full legal right to monitor email as well as the sites employees go to. Companies discourage personal use of the computers by employees for many different reasons. And there are special policies on accessing inappropriate content using companies' equipment. The tricky part of this question is that this particular one tests the candidate's knowledge and understanding of these policies, and more importantly, how candidate would behave under the circumstances. Let's look at the personal use of the business equipment first. Companies typically provide computers for use to their employees, but there are a lot of challenges with personal use of the business equipment. There are also consequences for using it to conduct inappropriate business activities. So, what are the typical personal uses of companies' computers? We can list five main categories. Make online purchases, send personal email, playing games on company's computer, downloading non-work-related materials, and downloading and installing non-work-related software. There are typically special policies for inappropriate content on business computers. And inappropriate or unauthorized content can be grouped into five main categories. Number one, content promoting hate based on race, religion, disability, sexual preference, and etc. Content promoting violent extremism, sexually explicit content, real or simulated violence, as well as last but not least, pirated software, which is the software you don't have legal license for. This question is very challenging because there is no one certain answer, but there are some important considerations if you look at the question definition. Number one. There is certainly a possibility for mistake and misunderstanding here, but if manager called employee for a discussion, there was probably enough evidence of wrongdoing that has been collected. Number two, since organizations own the equipment and network access, company has full legal right to monitor the employee. Understanding policies before accessing content should guide employee decisions. And last but not least, is that inappropriate access can be detected by computer monitoring tools as well as reported by co-worker. I believe in this particular question, candidate is tested on four essential traits. Honesty, trustworthiness, professional behavior, and in compliance with company policies. This question only implies that employee downloaded content and doesn't indicate if the content was appropriate or not. It only shows non-business related sites in the workplace, which does not necessarily indicate an inappropriate content. Another important consideration is that there is always a possibility for a mistake and misunderstanding like with everything in life. Role of an employee here is to provide facts and support the investigation. And the best strategy is to know the policies before using company's equipment and to follow those policies. Based on the listed answers, there are certain red flags that employees tested for. Number one, employee becoming defensive. Number two, attempts to hide what happened. And number three, attempts for revenge with someone who reported the employee. Based on these red flags, I think the least recommended answer is choice A. I would ask manager to provide evidence and learn more about who filed the complaint. And here is my recommendation for the most recommended answer. 
I believe that the goal here in this question to demonstrate leadership and take responsibility for your actions. And this is true not just in question, but in life as well. If you did something unknowingly, not knowing if it is prohibited by the policy, it is always a good idea to apologize. So my recommended answers in order are choice D, I would take responsibility for my actions. Choice B, explained what I did and what I was looking for. And then last but not least, choice C, I would apologize. Do you have a better solution for this question? Please make sure to post your answers as well as thought process in comments. Here's a very interesting question which tests unusual traits and doesn't have very obvious answer. John works as a manager at a large company. Recently, John was asked by his boss to sign a contract with a local business who is run by John's longtime friend but who previously had issues with the law. What should John do? And there are four choices to choose from. John should sign the contract. It will be a productive relationship since he knows the owner. Choice B. John should use his friendship and ask local business owner to give special discount to his employer to establish a long-term partnership. Choice C. John should work with legal department to add protective clause into legal language of the contract. And last but not least, choice D, John should report potential conflict of interest to his superiors and ask for the advice. Do you see the answer? What's interesting about these types of questions is that you need to select all that apply. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you concepts that are tested as part of this test. And obviously this is just my opinion. If you have different thought process, please make sure to share your solutions and choices in comments. I think this question is designed to test the candidate for the concept of conflict of interest. In this question, John has a conflict of interest with his employer. Conflict of interest is when someone's personal obligation or loyalties clash with their duties in the workplace. This is how it works. John's friendship compromises his ability to make impartial decisions, judgments, or actions that serve the best interests of his employer. In addition, John's friend, company owner, had issues with the law in the past and some industries in some countries, for example financial industries in the United States, may require company to disclose such relationship to the government. John has an established friendship with the local business owner, but at the same time he represents large company as a decision-making manager. Most organizations have policies in place to disclose conflict of interest for employees and managers. Let's look at three main reasons why disclosure is so important in the workplace for the company. Number one, organization needs to have all the information to make decisions. Number two, disclosing conflict of interest ensures interests of employers are protected. And number three, it reduces legal problems. I think there are four important characteristics and traits that are tested as part of this question. Number one, understanding laws and regulations. Number two, understanding company's compliance policies. Number three, understanding and disclosing conflict of interest to employer. And number four, asking question if there is a misunderstanding or lack of clarity. In addition, based on the answers that candidate selects, these are the red flags that this question might disclose. Number one, lack of objectivity. Number two, looking for inappropriate favors. Number three, manipulative or controlling behavior. Number four, inability to resolve conflict of interest. And number five, lack of emotional intelligence. Based on this information, I would recommend you avoid choices A, B, and C. Let's look at each one of them individually. Choice A, John should sign the contract. It will be productive relationship since he knows the owner. The fact that it might be productive relationship is true, but this does not provide the employer with all the information needed to make a decision. And there might be challenges in the future in this relationship. Another choice to avoid is choice B. John should use his friendship and ask local business owner to give him special discount to his employer to establish a long-term partnership. Even though this choice seems like a favor to the company, this shows manipulative behavior and hiding some information. Let's look at why should we avoid choice C. John should work with legal department to add protective clause into legal language of the contract. There shouldn't be any additional protective clauses here if John discloses all the information and all of his relationship, including conflict of interest. 
Based on this information, the correct answer here is choice D. John should report potential conflict of interest to his superior and ask for the advice. This choice shows John's humility, discloses conflict of interest, and complies with laws and regulations. Compliance is a formal process in most organizations to address conflict of interest. And the disclosure process is intended to help the workforce to be transparent and accountable for their actions and decisions. Disclosure of potential conflict of interest does not make it an actual conflict, but may help eliminate the perception. What do you think about this question? Do you have a different thought process? Please make sure to share your solution in comments. I would like to ask you to participate in our daily assessment test challenge. I post new question every day in the community tab of YouTube channel and give you an opportunity to answer it and try it. And I post answer in comments next day. So please make sure to check it out to test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's the very interesting question to determine your personality. You just arrived at the corporate event. You do not see anyone you know there. What would you do? You need to select all that apply out of the four different choices. Choice A. Observe others. Wait for people you know to arrive. Choice B. Approach people you don't know and introduce yourself. Choice C. Temporarily leave the event and come back later. Choice D. Check your itinerary to ensure you are at the right place. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the right answer. So you can always pause this video to determine the answer that you would want to choose. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to answer and have different recommendations, feel free to share in comments. I believe that in this question, you are being tested on whether you are a good team player. Work environments are very collaborative and companies are looking to hire people that work well with others. There are no easy ways to determine if a candidate is a good team player. For example, recruiters do not screen for quality candidates, but mostly focus on technical skills and try to submit as many candidates as possible to increase their chances. More than 50% of resumes contain lies. Non-team players hype their resumes to look like A players. Questions on behavioral interview are not very revealing. References checks are generally worthless. This is why companies ask questions on the test that might help them to determine the right candidate. During the assessment tests, companies look for essential traits for the team players. They typically look if the candidate is social, if candidates adapts easily to difficult situations, if candidate tackles challenges with enthusiasm, and whether potential employee is a creative problem solver. They also look for the red flags, and typically red flags are that the candidate likes working solo, doesn't take initiative, and maintains a status quo. Obviously, with these types of questions, there is no right or wrong answer, but there is a least recommended answer which you can spot based on the red flags. Because red flags are that the candidate doesn't take initiative, afraid of unfamiliar situations, and passively maintain status quo, the choices to avoid might be choice A, observe others and wait for people you know to arrive, or choice C, temporarily leave the event and then come back later. Based on what we know, organizations are looking to hire people that are team players, that can introduce themselves and feel comfortable and confident in unfamiliar settings. One thing to keep in mind is that you always want to be honest and answer how you would behave. But you also need to understand that your behavior is unpredictable until you're actually in this particular situation. Are you sure you will never behave as the best version of yourself? Can you become intentional and be courageous even if you feel uncomfortable about the situation? Keep in mind that you can also change yourself and behave as a team player. Considering that team player traits are being social, being easily adaptable, and being creative problem solver, the most recommended answer here is choice B. Approach people you don't know and introduce yourself. Do you have a better version on how to answer this question? 
please make sure to share in comments. Can you tell us how many questions did you answer correctly? Please make sure to post in the comment section of this video to share with others. And now let's continue to get you ready for the test. Very frequently during the job interview, you might be asked the question, how would people close to you describe you in few words? As a candidate, you might get worried because this is an open-ended question designed to learn as much as possible about the candidate. Open-ended questions cannot be answered with just yes or no response or with any pre-planned or predefined answer. Information provided as part of open-ended question can also be compared for consistency with the information already known to the interviewer from the previous responses, resume, or candidate's LinkedIn profile. Here's the trick. Even though open-ended questions don't have the right or wrong response with the correct answer that resonates with the interviewer, you have an opportunity to increase or decrease your chances to get hired. It is important to be honest and provide genuine answer, but you need to make sure that the answer presents you as the best possible candidate for the job. You should also avoid scripted answers and with every answer, try to increase your chances to get hired. Let's look at the tips and tricks of what you can do to provide the best possible answer to this question. Using three simple steps below, you can dramatically increase your chances to get hired. You can link your answer to desirable traits for the target job. For example, in step one, you can link your answer to desirable traits from the target job using the job description. In step two, you can determine expected job competencies based on your own job experience. For example, you can differentiate entry level, individual contributor, or managerial positions. And in step three, you can provide samples from your previous jobs or from your educational experiences to demonstrate that you have the desired competencies and you will be successful on the job. For example, you might be applying for the entry-level analyst job and one of the expected qualities from the job description is open-mindedness. You recall that one of your friends called you a constant learner because you always wanted to learn new things. Your answer to the question might be, my friends call me a constant learner because I love watching educational videos, read articles explaining how things work, and read self-improvement books. I think these qualities might help on the entry-level analyst job to better analyze the data, determine patterns, and present solutions to the problems, which will help company to succeed. It is important to keep in mind that for the open-ended questions, you can prepare in advance. This way, you don't have to share the first answer that comes to your mind. By having few stories from your past experience available, you can intentionally select the answers that will best represent you using the simple rules. Rule number one, determine what interviewer might be looking for based on the job experience. Rule number two, Determine which traits will help candidate to succeed in the new job. Rule number three, find examples from your past that help you increase your chances to get hired. Rule number four, avoid negativity and present yourself in the best possible way. And rule number five, align answers with the overall story you are presenting to the interviewer and be prepared for the follow-up questions. Here is another example if you're applying for the individual contributor software engineering job, for which problem solving is an essential skill. You recall that you might have solved on your own how to assemble Rubik's Cube, and your answer might look like this. My friends call me a genius as a joke when I learned how to assemble Rubik's Cube and was able to do it in the record time. Persistence and patience that I learned as part of this experience it also helps me to solve any problem that I face. I'm always able to determine the root cause of the problem, generate possible solutions, evaluate alternatives, and select the best possible outcome. For the leadership position, effective presentation might be one of the expected qualities, and you might bring up your ability to simplify and explain complex concepts to different audiences. You might recall 
that your kids called you the best teacher ever when you explain to them how government works and your answer might look like this my young family members often call me the best teacher ever because i'm able to describe complex concepts in a very simple way based on the level of my target audience i use this quality to prepare a simple executive summary and one-page visual which helps me communicate clearly and gets everyone on the same page thanks for watching if you like the content please give us a like and consider subscribing thanks for all your endorsement support and patronage for additional helpful information please make sure to check out links in the description for detailed list of available resources i encourage you to check out resources page on our website howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources if you know someone who would benefit from this content please consider sharing the link please leave the feedback corrections or suggestions in comments and all the best on your journey i'll see you in my next video